Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Stalls TV presentation of Printing Outside the Box Locations. I'm Courtney Kibitza with Stalls TV, and today we're going to take a look at how we can increase sales and expand our offering by offering more print locations and unique print areas on all of the garments that we're decorating today. This is your first time attending a live Stalls TV class. Um, if there's a couple of you on here, we have a couple people that will be helping me throughout the session just to make sure everything will go um, smoothly and give you guys the live experience that we possibly can. The first person is going to be Jody Edgar. So Jody will help facilitate questions in the chat. So on the right hand side of your screen you'll notice a panel through GoToWebinar that actually has where you can chat in questions to us. As questions arise as to what I'm printing or what materials I'm using, feel free to type those in. Jody will answer them as we go and she'll stop me in between the class so that I can answer them on camera also. Um, secondly is Joe Kaczynski. He works for Stalls TV as well in video production and he's going to help me get um, some zoomed in angles on different garments and print areas so you guys can see the unique locations that we're decorating here today. Aside from that, we're excited to get started. So the heat press, as you know, is the most versatile machine that you guys have in your shop. So we want to know what type of heat press you have before we get started so we can show you how to use the proper accessories. So Jody, if you could launch that poll question. Just let us know what type of heat press you have. We're going to take a look at different accessories such as platens and pillows and pads that we'll use to print unique locations. So we want to make sure we can translate them well to everybody who's on the um, broadcast today. Jody, if you want to go ahead and let us know what the results are. Uh, we have 47% in a Hotronics Fusion, 7% in a Hotronics Autoclam, 7% on a max and 47% on another. Oh, okay, great. So it's like 50-50. A lot of fusion owners and a lot of other owners. So we'll cover everything. Um, so to pr print multiple locations, whether it's a side of a t-shirt or a hood of a um, hoodie or a jacket, you're going to use a variety of accessories to be able to get the accurate print. So we'll look at heat printing pillows. Um, we'll also look at interchangeable platens, such as this 11 by 15 or a sleeve platen, and that'll allow us to get accurate pressure on all of the print areas. So to dive on in, I'm going to head over to my Fusion Heat Press. Jody, if you could switch to Joe's camera, that way we can get a good angle on that. And I'm going to load my first garment on. So for my first application, we'll start with a typical front print. This is traditional on a lot of garments, so this would be kind of your basic screen printed t-shirt that you're decorating for maybe an event or a school. And then we'll look at how we can add multiple print locations to be able to sell this garment for more um, and make it more personalized to our customer base. So I'm just loading it on the Fusion heat press and preheating it to remove some of the moisture wrinkles. Doing this by splitting open the garment and threading it on the same way you would with an ironing board. For my front transfer, I'm actually using a screen printed transfer from Transfer Express. The reason I chose to use this on the front of my t-shirt is I'm imagining that I'm going to be printing a lot of these t-shirts for maybe fan apparel for a school or for the team. And I want to be able to get the best cost. So I created a two color transfer using the Easy Prints transfer from Transfer Express. This will apply very fast and easy. I actually have it in an alternate application for all of my transfers at 340 degrees for 10 seconds. But you can also print goof proof at high as 365 degrees for four fast seconds. So printing multiple transfers like this and personalize the front of my t-shirt. It allows me to then go back through my garment and then turn it over and add multiple print locations. So let's say I've stocked these screen printed t-shirts for everybody and then when they come in I can offer to add a shoulder print or maybe a bottom right print on the t-shirt with personalization. So to personalize this I'll just preheat real quick to get some of those moisture and wrinkles out. Remember, when you're threading the garment, you're only preheating the front and not the back, so it's important to preheat both sides to ensure accurate applications. And then using CatCut Glitter Flake, I've cut two additional transfers to personalize this with maybe a matching color to the front, or I can offer their favorite color for the team. I'm just going to do a little shorter print here in the back with a personalized number, and I'll lock that down for 10 quick seconds. So this could be one personalization offer you offer to your customers to these t-shirts, or we could offer to personalize it with their name, either in the shoulder print or on the bottom right. So now we've got our shoulder print. I'm just going to pull that off so I don't have to worry about it being in the way.
and I'll add in my bottom right print. Again, just 10 seconds for Cat Cut Glitter Flake. I'm a little short there on five. My timer wasn't updated. There we go. So I'll peel that carrier back, and we have another print location. So just another way to take a screen printed transfer and be able to sell the garment for more money. So we've got a lower right print um, and a shoulder print as well on this t-shirt. So an extra option for personalizing with names, numbers, and unique locations in unique areas. The great thing about it is it makes it very fashionable for fan wear and fan apparel, um, but it also ends up cutting the cost since the design and elements are very small. For my second garment, we're going to take a look at what's always been popular in the wraparound prints. Wraparound prints out a lot of unique print locations for screen printers and heat printers as well, and they're easy to do on the heat press. So again, I'm just going to open my t-shirt and thread it on. Now, different from when I did that very front print, you can notice that I have my sleeve and the side of my press, my, the side of my shirt actually up on my press. I want to make sure where I'm printing for a wraparound print, I'm not going too far to the front or too far to the back, so I'm loading it on just about to where my um, shoulder is centered with my platen. I'll pull that sleeve off to make sure I'm not getting inaccurate pressure, and then preheat the side of my shirt to get some of those wrinkles out. Now I can take my large design, this is just another CAD cut transfer, so if you have a vinyl cutter, this is a great way to add a wraparound print. And I can kind of eye it up with center of my design, and I just want to make sure it's going to be basically centered with that same sleeve on the t-shirt. This will allow it to give that wraparound effect that I'm looking for. Now this material is fashion film, so it applies at 320 degrees for 15 seconds. Just going to adjust the time and temperature very quickly using the touch screen on the front of the fusion. Since I had it a little bit at a higher heat for the transfer, I want to start cooling it down to the correct application. So again, I'll lock that down for 15 seconds. And it's going to create a great uh, wraparound print. Then we can add a left chest print logo or we could add a full front logo to really add to the garment. The nice thing about CAD Cut Fashion Film is it's very inexpensive, so if you have a vinyl cutter, you're looking at less than a penny per square inch. So for this large design on the wraparound print, which is typically about 12 by 12 um, or 12 inches wide, so it'll wrap around the entire bottom of the shirt. Um, that way it allows you to kind of cut the cost and keep it low and affordable for your customers. So this is a great personalization element. Again, as I mentioned, we could easily personalize the front with maybe a school name or a player name, but adding that um, Indian head down around the bottom can add some extra print and, and kind of upsell the garment a little bit. So secondly, we'll print the front and the back in a unique location for the back of the garment and explain why we're doing this with the film that we are. For this, I'm using just a regular ladies' razorback tank top. Um, of course, printing a razorback tank top like this will present a variety of issues, such as the print through I could get from um, the thick seams of this razor back. So not only do I want to thread this, but I want to make sure to have a platen that fits this slim ladies cut t-shirt or tank top. So I'm just going to take out my 16 by 20 platen. On the Hotronics Fusion, there's an interchangeable platen feature, which will allow me to pull this out, twist it, and then add in a smaller size. So this one is just the 11 by 15. It's kind of perfect for um, small prints on ladies garments. I can load it portrait or landscape depending on what type of design I'm going to be decorating. So I'm just going to load on my ladies garment. You can see here how the um, back of the Razorback tank has fallen below, so now I don't have any worries or any issues with print through or inaccurate pressure on my front transfer. Preheat and check my pressure. Since I had changed the platen, I want to make sure I'm not offering too much pressure to my garment, and that's just by adjusting the um, over the center adjustment knob at the top of my heat press. Looks like I have a medium pressure, which is required for this transfer. Now for this look, we're going to be using a reflective heat transfer material. So this heat transfer will be good for uh, maybe an event or a run or personalizing for that reason. Now imagining that the um, Runners that are purchasing this at the event are going to be using this in multiple locations. We want to make sure that when they're outside running, they're able to stay safe. Um, and that reflective element in the 3M reflective I'm using will allow them to do that. 
can I'll just apply this for 10 to 15 seconds, which is the recommended application for 3M Reflective. And then we'll add a lower back print to the tank top to kind of add that um, extra element of design and also safety to this garment. This way, the runner will be able to be seen from both the front and the back whenever she's running. So I'll peel back the carrier of the 3M Reflective. And 3M Reflective can be cut um, on a vinyl cutter or it can also be purchased in custom transfer. So if you're looking to create looks like this and you don't have a cutter, you can do so with that. Now for this last print, what I'm going to be doing is I want to print something just along the bottom edge here. That way whenever the runner is running, whether she has maybe a cinch pack backpack on um, or anything, it's not going to get into the way. So it adds an extra print location for them in a unique spot that's not typically decorated. Normally in the back we end up with designs that are somewhere around the um, shoulder blades or on a razor tank. They might be just below where the razor meets. So you're going to lock down this transfer. This is a good way to add a quote or a saying or personalize it with a name on the back of the um, tank top. Again, if you guys have questions throughout the entire session, feel free to chat those into Jody because we'll pause and take time to kind of answer them throughout. Again, it was easy to center just within the center of my garment by loading it onto my heat press, and now we're able to have a um, complete front print personalized with a back, lower back print on a tank top. So that way, whichever way the runner is running, we're able to see them kind of coming and going with the reflective elements. Another unique design trend that's uh, very popular is being able to print down either the right side or the left side of a garment to so being able to add um, different print locations in that way. So we're going to take a garment um, and just load it on to my heat press. Again, I'm just going to rotate my bottom platen here and thread this on. So you can choose whichever side um, fits your design element the best, whether you want to do the right or the left. Um, a lot of customers and a lot of decorators will typically decorate the right side and then add a left chest print on the side for an um, additional print location. So again, I'll just get that quick moisture and wrinkles out. Then I'm going to line up my transfer down the right side. So here I don't want to be too far um, down to the bottom because I don't want to be too close to the seam or too far over since I want it to be shown on the side of my garment. And since this design has lines, it's able for me to look, kind of line up with the seam a little bit to get a straight print. So typically want to be about two to three inches above from the bottom seam and then over to the side as well, about a, an inch over from the seams on the side. This material is actually fashion film and a color is called neon punch. So as spring starts to kind of pop up there, think of that kind of those kind of popular neon shades and colors for different apparels and items. 15 seconds at 320 degrees. You can hot peel the application here. So now what I'm going to do is actually going to rotate this and add a print area that's unique kind of to the back of the collar of the shirt. Um, this is a print area that's um, growing in popularity among you know, young adults or teenagers and being able to add a kind of a secret print location. Now since this is actually going to be decorated for a dance school, um, I've actually personalized the back with an option for the customer to add um, as their, you know, their type of style of dance and a little silhouette or maybe their name to the top collar. And for lining this up, I'm basically just lining this up with the, um, I've loaded my shirt on straight and I'm lining it up with a tag that's in the center of the crew neck shirt. So I know that I'm getting a, a center collar print. Again, just 15 more seconds. So if you're cutting heat transfer vinyl yourself, being able to personalize the back um, of a shirt like this, you'd be looking a little bit less than a penny per square inch. I believe the design here is about a two by two. So you'd be looking at about four to five cents in material. And then just a quick application. So especially if you're personalizing the front of the shirt already, being able to kind of just keep that material on there while you've got it loaded onto your cutter and cut an additional design. Um, of course, if you don't have a vinyl cutter, you could order custom transfers. 
um, as well for personalizing the back with different silhouettes and design. So we have a um, center back design with a neon punch fashion film acro logo. And then we've gone ahead and done the front of the garment as well with a right side print. So you can see how we haven't gone too far over to the side to where you can't see the entire design whenever it's worn, but just down the right side of the bottom of the garment. Do you have any questions that have came in just yet? No questions. Okay, great. So we'll keep going. The next items I'm going to be decorating are going to be um, pant legs or leg prints. So as you start to print and personalize more items like leg prints, of course there's a variety of areas you can print. Um, there's always the traditional 4x4 four four logo that's at the top of your um, pant leg. There's always a, a back print traditionally on shorts. And a lot of the times we see a lot of full leg prints as well. But a unique new print location that we're starting to see in a lot of performance wear and sportswear is a bottom um, left print on the bottom of a capri pant or um, a bottom of a um, yoga pant like I have here. This is just a yoga pant from Sanmar. And being able to personalize a small element um, is really great for adding more print locations or understated branding, especially in um, small businesses, maybe a fitness center or corporate apparel like that. Now because of the narrow um, footprint that we have here on this garment, of course I'm not going to be able to thread it on. Depending on the heat press you have, you're going to have to use an accessory that's going to allow you to get a flat print surface and kind of remove these seams from getting into the way of your print. If you don't have a heat press like the Fusion or the Auto Clam that allows for interchangeable platens, you can use a heat printing pillow like this. Just slide it into your garment and that will raise up your print area and ensure that you're going to get an accurate print surface right in that print area. If you have a fusion style heat press, um, the bottom of it is actually, um, the thread of this is so deep and so open that we're able to change out this into a sleeve and a leg platen that will allow us to completely thread on the entire pant leg. So the sleeve and leg platen is actually just a um, 6 by 20 inch platen. It's going to allow me again to split open the garment, thread it on. This is especially important. It'll be nice for me to do my small logo as well. But as you start to print more garments and you really need to thread them on and get a flat print surface like we'll see here in a moment with a pair of capris, it adds more um, options for you for getting a flat print area. So again, just give that a quick preheat to get some of the moisture and wrinkles out and adjust my pressure if needed. I'm just going to line up the um, material that I have here. And this product is actually called Super Tech Clear Matte. So if you haven't seen it, it's actually a printable clear material that can be cut on a vinyl cutter as well and just a clear material. So it actually will create a matte finish on whatever garment and kind of a two-tone look on whatever color garment that you apply it to. It's particularly important for performance wear because it applies as, well, as low as 280 degrees. I'm at a little higher temperature. Um, of 320 degrees. So again, I'm just going to use my cover sheet to cover that up and hold them down. Cover sheets like I'm using here are great for protecting the garment or the transfer from the heat of the heat press or something being stuck at the top of the press. Um, they don't have to be used with the CAD-cut transfers I've been using in the past, but they're always good as a safety measure to make sure you're getting um, a durable, accurate print. You're not transferring over transfers and ruining garments. So again, I'm locking this down for the recommended application with just 10 seconds. And SuperTech Clear Matte applies from anywhere from 280 degrees to 320. It's also a cold peel, so I'm going to give it a second to cool down. And I can do this by taking it off of the press and kind of laying it to the side to pull back later. If I have multiple garments, I can pull out some of the heat with maybe a table or a cookie sheet or um, a piece of marble or something that I have in my shop that's a little bit cooler. Sometimes even the steel on the bottom of your Hotronic seat press will work as well. Once I have it cooled down, I can peel back my carrier. You can see kind of the unique print we've gotten now on the uh, left hand side of the pant leg. And this can be added in addition to multiple print locations. So if you're already printing an area of the uh, left, the 4x4 four four area on the side of your pant leg, this gives you an option for adding an additional print location now on the bottom of this pant leg. So you can um, you just add an extra you know, 15 cents in material, maybe add an extra print location and sell it for maybe five more dollars to the, the customer or win a bid because you've been able to print an additional branding location. 
So great for sponsorships and things like that on um, different sports apparel and track teams. So while I have the sleeve and leg platen on the press, I'm also going to be decorating a pair of capris. So again, another popular um, decorating method is always the full leg down the print, or full print down the leg. So I'm just going to be adding a um, glitter flake transfer that goes all the way down the side of the leg print. So this is important because you don't want it to go too high up uh, that you're not going to see it, but you don't want it to go too far down to the bottom um, that it could um, get lost if the customer starts to roll up the bottom of their capri pants. So you want it to go somewhere in the center here and off to the side of the pant leg. So I'm going to just load on my capri pants. Give them a quick preheat. And then apply my glitter flake transfer. This is just cat cut glitter flake in the color pink all the way down the side of my pant leg. So I want to make sure when I've loaded this on here, you can see um, that I've actually loaded it on to the side of my pant leg being the side of my sleeve platen. That way I can line this up to ensure that it's going to be about five inches down from my pocket and off to the side of my pant leg. So it's going to go directly down the side of the leg. Make sure my zippers and everything are off. And I'll apply this for the full 10 seconds at 320 degrees. Peel back that carrier. Pull it off to the side there and you can see uh, we have an accurate print down the side of the pant leg. I can easily roll these to kind of show the customers what it would look like if they roll up their pant legs a little bit um, on their capris or scrunch them up. And it's a nice, accurate print. Again, if you want to print an additional location, like maybe the back or something for a traditional look, you could easily do that. So my next couple of garments are going to move into um, kind of unique print locations and a lot of print locations on one garment to show your customers the variety and what you can do to decorate them. For this garment, I'm going to be printing um, a V-neck hoodie <coughs> garment. This is just um, a garment that was purchased from Boxercraft. And I'm going to add multiple print locations. So with this, I'm going to print a left chest logo, which is probably pretty traditional for a garment like this, um, either a left chest or a full front. I'm going to add a sleeve location with my sleeve platen. And then also multiple locations such as printing on the top of the hoodie and the lower back just to show the customer how we can personalize and put their information, their name and number um, with the heat press on multiple areas of the garment. So while I have the sleeve platen on currently, I'm just going to go ahead and load on my sleeve of my Boxer Craft garment. Once I have that in place, I'll preheat it to get some of the moisture and wrinkles out. And then I'm going to add my personaliz personalization down the sleeve. So this garment's going to be decorated for a hockey or a volleyball team. So I have multiple print locations. I have volleyball down the sleeve. I have the team name on the back. I have a Lady Raiders logo for the left chest. And then even a quick saying or maybe a, um, a mantra that they use for the team that you can personalize the top of the hoodie on. So we'll start with the sleeve print, which is going to be the volleyball. Now, if you notice while I had this laying up there, one of the great things about printing this many locations is I'm actually able to gang my designs up so that I'm only loading my material on once. And you can see I'm not using a whole lot of material whenever I'm cutting these designs. Typically, I'd probably be somewhere like this to line up my graphics. And I'm going directly across a 15 or a 20 inch side roll, depending on what size you purchase. I'm going to just line up my volleyball transfer again down the sleeve. So when I loaded this garment on, I was cautious to make sure that I'm adding the, um, if the garment has a sleeve, you can line it up that way. But I want to make sure it's going down the center. Um, so I've loaded this on this way that the um, center of the shoulder would fall just about down the center of my heat press platen.
And this is um, cat cut fashion film and just neon green. So I'm just going to change the temperature to be the 320 <coughs> degrees at 15 seconds. So cost of material for something like this could be very inexpensive if you're ganging up your designs whenever you're cutting them to personalize the garment. So you're looking, um, if you're cutting cat cut fashion film yourself for a transfer like this, you would be looking at about um, 50 cents to 75 cents in material for this design. And that's all of the areas that we've printed for multiple print locations. So once I have the sleeve print completely finished um, down the front of the sleeve, I can load my garment on. Um, and I can print my left chest logo position and all of my other locations. So to do this, I'm going to just put back in that um, 11 by 15 platen that I had showed you a bit earlier. Quick switch of the gold latch at the bottom of the fusion. And then I can drop back in my 11 by 15. Just drops right in with a pin registration, so it makes it quick and easy to kind of switch them in and out. So I'll start with my left chest, which would have been my traditional print. Now, the left chest on this garment is very interesting because you can see there's a pretty deep V. Um, so I want to make sure it's a ladies cut. So ladies cuts tend to be a little bit slimmer whenever you're doing a left chest. You want to be careful not to go um, too far below. So if I lined it up with the bottom of this V, which a lot of people do with maybe a polo garment, uh, with this particular garment it would be too, too low for the placement. It would be too close to being underneath the arm of the shirt. Preheat it before I align my garment and check my pressure. Looks like I need to adjust it just a little bit at the top there. So I'm just going to line that up with the um, about three to four inches down from the top of my garment to about three to four inches over from what could have been the center line, which is um, not a whole lot of room with a V-neck like this, so you'd be looking about three inches over from your center. Once I have that in place, I'll press it for the recommended 15 seconds. And then we can turn this over and add our back print. So this would be very similar to the tank top, but in another unique area on the back of this hooded sweatshirt. Fashion film's a hot peel, so I can easily peel the carrier back. And I'm just going to turn this garment around. Print my lower back print. Now I need to double check and make sure. One thing when you're cutting transfers and using multiple platens, is to know whether or not you need to rotate your platen or if the design and garment will fit. So there's always a good marrying there. So for this platen, I can actually just rotate it instead of having to take the entire thing out. So that's one of the nice things about this 11 by 15 because it's uh, very versatile and allows you to print a lot of different print locations and a lot of different garments. So again, as I'm loading this on, I want to make sure I'm getting my garment centered. Um, there's a lot of leeway here since I'm only in a 11 inch wide garment. So I'm just pulling this so I can see where the center of my garment is with my platen. Then I can just pull it back so I know I'm still in the center of my garment whenever I go to do my lower back print, which is going to fall right around here. Another unique print option would be to wrap around um, the complete bottom or maybe just switch it over to a little bit of a bottom left or a bottom right. And you can get really unique with the placements, whether you want it to be center, left alignment, or right alignment on the garment. And I'm actually lining this up almost exactly with the um, seam that's at the bottom of the garment because I want it to show um, pretty low on the garment. Lock this in place for the 15 seconds. And then we'll complete our final application, which is going to be on the top of a hood. So hoodies um, and jackets and different things like this will present a lot of different print options because you can personalize on the hood, underneath the hood, the lower back. Another nice reason to add a print area like this is when the hood is up, um, you don't have to worry about the lower back print if you're putting a name or number um, too high up that maybe it's being covered by the hood or maybe somebody's hair. You could easily do a name at the bottom with a number on top. And that's another unique way to add names and numbers to the backs of hoodies and jackets. So I'll peel back my fashion film carrier. 
So my third print location is complete. And then for my final one, we're going to flip this over and add one print location before we show you the completed results to the top of the hood. Now, no matter what way I add this onto my platen, whether I print it on the side here or off to the front, I'm going to get a lot of um, extra pressure here from getting the high seam of the hood since there's a lot of material kind of bunched up there in that little seam. Um, so what I want to do is I want to make sure I'm getting an accurate print, and if my transfer prints directly over the seam, I'm not going to have any issues with it peeling up or not sticking. So to do this, I'm actually going to use one of the heat printing pillows I had showed you a little bit earlier. So what this heat printing pillow will do whenever you're printing directly over seams, like maybe the seam of a t-shirt or the seam of a hoodie, it's going to allow it to kind of print um, and fall all the way down into the pillow. That way my transfer rises up and it gets the perfect pressure that I need for this design. So I'm actually going to do it, um, I'll rotate this real quick so I can get it loaded on a little bit easier. And it'll sit below my fusion heat press. Preheat, and since I added the heat printing pillow, it's always good to double check your pressure. I know a lot of people kind of skip that preheat step, um, but sometimes when you add that extra depth of maybe a heat printing pillow or change of a plat, and it's always good to double check and make sure you're not getting too much pressure to your garment. Like I'm going to be pretty close in this. I'm just going to rotate my pillow a little bit so I make sure it all falls onto the pillow. Whenever you're using heat printing pillows and you load your um, transfer onto the pillow, it's always good to double check and make sure you're getting an accurate print area in all the locations where your design are going to hit. Printing the top of a hoodie with maybe the um, player's name, their number, their mantra for the team, or maybe just their saying is always a great way to upsell garments, especially if you're just screen printing them traditionally um, and not offering unique personalization areas. As you start to print hoods, another good idea to keep in mind is the lower back of a hood. This one here is kind of offered the print location is when you put the hood up and you can kind of see the the mantra of the team directly on it. But another unique print area would be to print the back of the hood so that when the hood is up, you could have maybe a school logo or a saying or something right there where it's only shown from the back whenever the, um, the customer's hood is up. So for completed garments, so far we have a uh, front, a, sh a, sleeve a sleeve placement, which we could easily do um, on both sleeves if we wanted to with multiple prints. So we could have volleyball down one side, maybe another team name on the other side. We've got our left chest um, Lady Raider logo, the lower back print, a little bit of personalization below the hood, and then we went above and beyond and kind of added their mantra and their logo on the top of that hoodie so it's shown whenever they're um, kind of wearing the garment. It just creates a unique look for the customer. So for our next garment, if you've seen lately, um, if we haven't seen the oversized shirts that are getting increasingly popular, this is sort of a play on that of a masculine type way. So there's a variety of garments that are on the marketplace for these oversized shirts. If you haven't seen them, they're typical shirts um, without the hood traditionally that would, be go would have wide shoulders and the design on the back of the garment would go shoulder to shoulder. So very recently, um, one of the manufacturers, Pennant Sportswear, came out with a V-neck hood version, which is really great because it's kind of unisex, so it goes for women or men and adds a garment that um, men are more likely to wear. So we wanted to show a unique print area on these types of garments for people to be able to personalize them more and really decorate um, them to the fullest and create their full image. So what we wanted to do is create a full front image that went from shoulder to shoulder across the front of the garment. So if you haven't seen these being, being printed on the back side, um, there is a video on Stalls TV called How to Print Billboard Crews. And that'll show you the ins and outs of how to personalize these unique garments on the complete shoulder to shoulder on the back. But for this specific print area, we want to print the front and offer a unique location um, and sell more to, ma to more males um, where we're kind of missing the market with the oversized shirts currently. So I'm just switching back in a 16 by 20 platen. As I'm sure you can imagine, the design um, for we're going shoulder to shoulder on that large garment is going to be a bit bigger than my um, 11 by 15 and even my 16 by 20 platen. So I may need to add um, some different accessories and different things to be able to print this location accurately. So to start with a fusion heat press, I'm just going to split open my garment again and thread it on. 
This helps ensure I won't have any print through from the back collar or the back seam of the shirt that could cause inaccurate pressure. Now I want to preheat to get some of the moisture and wrinkles out. So to do this, I'm just pulling the um, garment all the way over to the side so that I'm getting my far corner of the garment, which is where my application will start on the press. Give it a quick preheat and adjust my pressure as needed for the new platen. Looks like I'm almost there. Again, I'm just adjusting the over the center pressure adjustment knob. Great. So the transfer I'm going to be applying is called Sport Film Light, and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but it applies at a medium pressure. Preheat my other side of the garment. Three to five seconds is traditional for preheating. And the one I've done here is I've actually loaded my garment back on to where I'm finding the center of the shirt with the V-neck um, and checking to make sure I've got the same amount of material on the side so I know I'm centered with my platen. The next thing I want to do is I want to find the center of my transfer. Now the transfer I'm using is called Sport Film Light. Um, the reason I chose to use it is because it doesn't have, it has a little bit of a sticky backing, but it's not overly sticky so it makes it great for weeding um, large designs like this very quickly. And it's also inexpensive, so when I'm using a big design like this, I want to make sure to try to keep my cost as low as possible. So that kind of finds the center of my design. Now one other thing I want to do with this specific design is I want it to come up about as close as possible to the V on my garment and making sure that I'm getting the full Y um, also fitting into this blue part of the design. So it kind of fits almost like a glove. So once I have it in place, I can kind of hold this down. Now, as I mentioned, um, Sport Film White has a little bit of a tacky backing, but it's not overly tacky. So to heat press this, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to pick it up and just slide it over and shift it just a little bit. So if you're worried about it moving at all during application, one other thing that you can use is a heat seal tape that will hold it in place. And this is just a blue tape that can easily be heat pressed right over. So if you're worried about it sliding on your specific garment with your design, you could easily tape it down in place on both sides and heat press directly over it. Now when you do pull it over to the far left hand side, you want to make sure that all of the design is fitting onto the um, heat press and you're not going to have any issues there. So I'll lock this down and apply it for Sport Foam Light's recommended application, which is 15 seconds at 320 degrees. And once this application is complete, we'll just pick up the heat press, well, lift up the heat press, slide over the garment, and then press my other side. Careful not to wrinkle the carrier on the um, garment whenever you're rotating it. Making sure my B is hitting the top corner here, and I can lock that down for the recommended application. So again, the center of my design is going to be hit with two applications, um, but this material can easily be hit with another product over top of it, so you're able to kind of um, max add a little bit more heat of 30, 45, 60 seconds without it damaging the transfer. And that center part's only getting about 30 seconds completely. So Sport Foam Light is a warm peel, so I'll give it a few seconds to cool down. Start peeling my other side here since it's already cool. A few seconds to cool this down here. I've actually put it a little bit too early on my other side. If you notice lifting whenever you're pressing something like this, you could easily just load it back on the plat end and then cut it, hit it for another 10 to 15 seconds to hit it back down in place and kind of reheat that adhesive. Then we'll let it go off to the side and I'll let it cool down completely before peeling the rest of the front of the design. Okay, so while that's cooling, we'll talk about other areas for print locations on these types of garments. Um, and that would be a shoulder print here on the back so it doesn't get into the way of a hood. Again, another awesome print area would be the underneath of the hood here with maybe a city skyline of Brooklyn or something like that personalizing. We've already seen the top of the hood, so that's another option as you start to add more print locations to these oversized shirts. Sleeve prints on these are another um, option for adding more print locations. Give you guys a full view here, get it up on the platen. So 
So as you can see, kind of how it goes from shoulder to shoulder all the way across the front of this design, um, offering unique print locations to your customers, kind of adding a personalization across the front with their own name, um, school name, different things like that. And then we're just going to add one more print area, which is going to be the shoulder print on the left of the garment. Now, whenever you're lining up this back print or this back design, um, again, this is another oversized design because this is the main mantra of these types of garments is being big and loud and oversized. Um, so we want to make sure our graphics stand out and are large like that as well. Now, whenever I'm lining up my transfer for this, I want to make sure that it's not so far over that it's going to be completely covered by the hood of my hoodie. Um, so I've pulled this over exactly like I did so that I've got that left side of my garment kind of lined up on the heat press. And then I'm just going to line up my transfer. And you can decide whether you want to do it perfectly straight on a shoulder print or add a little bit of flair and kind of turn it a little bit um, to the side or crooked on the back of my garment. And then before I press it, I just want to double check and make sure you know, my um, hoodie isn't going to get in the, back, in the way of my back print. So 15 full seconds here for this garment. So we'll give that a couple seconds to cool down, because remember, Sport From Light is a warm peel. We can take it off the heat press and lay it off to the table to the side here. That's always the quickest way for it to cool down a little bit, since the heat press platen is typically pretty hot from multiple applications. I am uh, about as impatient as they come when it comes to peeling carriers, as I'm sure a lot of you guys are too, right? Time is money. So you can peel this cold as well, so if you had multiple ones, you could set them all off to the side and come back and peel them later. So now, as you can see, we've got a nice back shoulder print on this oversized shirt that kind of just um, stands out and adds a little bit more of an element to the garment, and then a nice oversized full front design. So if you're already selling these oversized shirts to tier teams and different markets like that, this adds a new market for you to be able to sell these garments to that you aren't traditionally meeting. And those garments are just available by Pennant Sportswear for the hoodie style. So for my final garment, we all know that most people decorate a, he, um, a cap or a hat with a traditional placement across the front. It's embroidered that way, it's heat pressed that way, just kind of the style that we're used to. Um, and for that, you need a separate platen and a separate heat press, which is called a uh, cap heat press or a hat heat press. Um, but now with your shirt press, a, you're able to add more print locations either to the top of a flat bill or the bottom. I mean, of course, you could do that with just a small element or a small design by um, loading it onto your heat press with a regular platen. But you're getting inaccurate pressure in certain areas, or you might be limited to your design. So if you want a full design that really stands out, um, you need to change to a different platen or something that's going to be allowing you to get the full accurate pressure. So for that, I'm just going to change out this bottom platen to one that's actually called a cap or a flat bill platen. And what this is going to allow me to do is get a flat print surface across my entire um, bill of my hat. And because it fits on a 16 by 20 heat press or a 16 by 16 press, you'll actually notice I have curvature areas where I can print multiple hats at once. So if you're going to be personalizing you know, three or four hats at once or selling teams of you know, 20 to 30 hats, you really increase your production because now I can actually slide all of the hats into these little curvatures. I get that flat printing service from corner to corner, and I can personalize the entire area of the platen very fast and very efficiently. Um, now, before I heat press this, these caps were just um, purchased from AutoCap, and they donate a lot to the Stalls TV education as well. So I want to make sure to remove that sticker just so it doesn't stick to the heat press with a higher heat, especially for some transfers. And then I can line up my transfer. So this is actually a transfer that's been cut um, and cat cut glitter flake in the charcoal color to add an additional element to maybe a lady's hat. Um, neons are also very popular for this type of style. And then to create this design, if you're um, wanting to personalize a lot of these hats and you're not sure where to start as far as artwork goes because you want the curvature to fit exactly into this hat, if you visit cadworkslive.com, um, and Jody, if you could type in cadworkslive to the entire attendance, 
Um, it's just a free online design software from Stahl. So if you have an Stahl's account or a Transfer Express account, you can log in. And it has this template that's called 5950, which basically fits the majority of um, flat bill hats and kind of adds that curvature already set in there. So you can easily just change your font, add in your clip art, and it makes personalizing these types of hats very fast and very easy. So cat cut glitter flake applies at 10 seconds, 320 degrees. So I'm just going to lock that down in place. Go back my carrier, we have a completed personalized hat that's been decorated with a cat press. So again, just adds that additional element. Now I can easily flip this over um, and add a print location to the front just by flipping the inside of the hat around. So this offers me another print location here. And then again, if you have that cat press or if you have an embroidery machine where you're, heat, where you're already decorating caps, of course you've got your standard application. So, um, this gives you more options for printing and personalizing more hats and more garments to your customers. Jody, have I received any additional questions throughout the entire session? No questions. Okay, great. I'm going to jump back to my main camera here. If you guys have questions or things that you wanted to know about throughout the entire session, feel free to um, type those in now as we start to kind of conclude the class and talk about the different looks and different items we have here. Um, so, so far we were able to show you, we'll kind of go back and circle back around. So we had the under the bill hat that was printed with the, that was printed with the um, flat bill platen on the Hotronics Fusion heat press, just adding more personalization to the underneath side of the bill. And this is becoming increasingly popular. So as right now it's baseball season and t-ball season um, is starting to come up, you're printing more garments for those types of things. This adds more personalization to those types of hats this summer. We also decorated the oversized billboard hoodie um, from the shoulder to shoulder and created a full print there. And then the back shoulder print to add an additional element of personalization to this garment. And this was using sport film light to keep the cost relatively low for this large design. We also printed four print locations on the V-neck hoodie from Boxer Craft. So we did a full shoulder, a full sleeve print, a left chest, a lower back. And then also the top of the hood there with a um, quote or a mantra for the team. We did the uh, Razorback tank top with a front and a lower back option with 3M reflective. So creating those safety elements whenever runners are running from the front and the back and adding a unique print location there, especially with a Razorback tank. We did a wraparound print which is incredibly unpopular for um, school spirit and streetwear and adding a unique print around the side of the garment so it really kind of moves with the t-shirt and that was using fashion film. We took a standard screen printed or screen printed transfer t-shirt, a stock item, and added personalization to the shoulder and the lower right of the back of the shirt so we could add more print locations there for the customers, more personalization, and sell the garment for a little bit more money by adding those additional elements to that. And then we talked about pant legs. So we did a full pant leg with cat cut glitter flake and talked about sales opportunities with that and adding understated branding to the bottom of a yoga pant um, and super tech clear mat. So Jody, if I had any questions about these garments or the applications? Uh, yes, there's two questions. Okay. Um, some bills are curved. Any suggestions for those? That's a great question. So there are a few hats that actually have a um, a curvature. Um, traditionally right now I haven't been able to print them completely flat on the flat bill platen since it's relatively new for stalls. Um, but you could obviously add, or you could always add them and just add a small print location down the side of the bill of the hat by just loading them onto your regular shirt press um, or something like that. But being able to, but putting the entire thing underneath here will flatten it a little bit so you want to try to keep away from putting the entire thing under your heat press. Uh, last question, what is in uh, white material that you parked the transfer on after you weeded? Oh, that's a good question. So the white material that I was pulling my transfers off, um, that's actually called a magic mask liner. So if you go to stalls.com, um, under their cat color materials and mask, they have, it's called a, ma a magic mask liner. Um, it's just a white material that we use to back our mask for printable materials. So we sell it in bulk by the roll, so you can purchase that.
um, and back your materials with it. If you buy your CAD cut or CAD color rolls from stalls in your packaging, you'll also find um, kind of a pink liner that's inside of there. And that's actually able to be used and reused if you save that to back your materials. It peels off nicely um, as kind of a way to back them without adding additional cost to your business by adding a liner. Any other questions? No more questions. Okay, great. We appreciate each and every one of you attending this live Stall TV class. Um, I encourage you to go to stallstv.com and see what other classes we have planned for you in the coming months. Um, we also have a survey at the end, so if you don't mind uh, chiming in, letting us know what you thought, what you'd like to see in upcoming Stall TV class, we appreciate the feedback. Um, but I'm Courtney Kibitza, and thank you so much for attending.